Welcome to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. I think I'm about to score with the honey today. These last, man, last uh, 10 or so combs that I can see, I can't see anything but capped honey in them. Where the caps start anyway, which is right around this level here this is gonna be a messy one you gotta keep a bucket of clean water with you when you do stuff like this so you can wash your hands as you go and your toes I'm gonna test out this mosquito jacket on this one I've never worn this for a cutout before I've actually never worn it to 10 bees but my dad wears one all the time it's got a zip up neck on it so you can get something to drink or spit or whatever and uh, usually you'd wear a hat under it. I'm not going to though. Anywhere it keeps it off your skin, you're basically protected. As long as it's against your skin, they're going to be able to get through. But same thing with a, uh, a bee jacket. You get out here and get to work on these things and get sweaty and your jacket starts sticking to you. And anywhere it's sticking to you, they can go right through it. Uh, there's some higher dollar, higher quality jackets that are vented better than the typical bee jacket and they're a little thicker and I, I think they offer a little more protection but they are really pricey you have to be custom fit for most of them and they're usually right around 250 300 dollars something like that just for the jacket part of it so i might have one of those eventually but right now i'll settle for my regular little day dance b jacket with the uh i, don't, I forget what they call it, the hood, the style of hood mine's got I'm going to try this little $20, $25 mosquito jacket on this one and see how it works out. Since this is a pretty good size hive and I'm not using a BVAC, I'm going to shoot some uh, bee quick up in the back of these spaces here so the bees don't retreat into spots that I can't get to without cutting some more of this belly cloth out. And that way when I get into them real good, they'll probably cluster right here around this piling and that'll make it a whole lot easier for me to look for the queen and gather everybody up. I just pulled out those first two back combs. One of them's bone dry but starting with the next one it's full of cat honey and that's the way they all are for the first ten combs and then it starts getting into the main part of the hive. They're not even back here working this. Probably just maintain it to keep beetles out, that's all they're doing back here. Well, it's hard to do this one handed in film, so I can't uh, really give you a true picture of what I'm doing, but you've seen it before. Good grief at the amount of honey in this thing. Man, ain't that pretty. This is the fourth comb in. Well, they just keep getting more impressive the deeper in I get. That's a lot of honey right there. They're heavy too. I can't I can't hold them without damaging the comb. So that's the reason for the clean bucket of water. Otherwise, I'd be covered with honey in just a few minutes. I set five combs in, not including that empty comb. I'm already looking at needing another bucket. Comb number six out. No end in sight for the honey. That's it for this bucket. I'm working on bucket number two. And you see where I am. I already got some in that bucket right there. Well, I'm starting to think this is just a remote storage location for the honey. I don't even see the hive yet. There's another solid comb of honey. I hadn't seen the first sign of brood yet. Other than an old hatched out queen cell right there. Or did I point it the right spot? Right there. I don't know if this is oh ye a little faith or oh ye of not enough preparation. I got two buckets full of comb, uh, honey filled comb. 
slap full and then I didn't bring enough buckets so I'm using my little ice chest there I don't I still don't know if that's gonna finish up with the honey I think it will but I don't know for sure I'm thinking I'm fixing to start seeing some brood here in the next row or two it looks like that was the last of the solid panels of honey now I should be seeing brood here real shortly that was the last piece I cut out it looks the same on front and back it won't fit in my ice chest <laughs> I don't know if you can see through this suit how hot I am, but I am wringing wet with sweat. I'm getting down to about a foot worth of the hive left. The bees are fixing to become more concentrate because I've taken away all that space that they were working. I have hit nothing but honey for the length of this hive here. I'm still in honey. It's not capped here, but it's, it's honey and old drone comb. That's full. Still no, still no brood. Don't get me wrong now, I'm not complaining. It's just rare that I pull out a hive that's got this much honey in it. I believe this is the last panel of honey. I've had to resort to, let's paint up from my hive tool. I've had to resort to mashing them just to get them to fit in the buckets and the buckets are just Tell you what, if I had another piece, that would be all I could fit because those other two are done. Those are slap full, squeezed down. I bet if I open that valve on that little thermos there, I'd get honey out of it. I'm finally to the brood. All oh, that was honey. Isn't that amazing? That's incredible to me how much honey was in that space. At least I'm into the brood now. I guess there must be space above this piling. I thought it would extend all the way to the floor, but uh, I don't think so, because there's no way all them bees are just right there. Because there was a lot of bees in here too. But uh, you can see how well that worked to spray bee quick up in those compartments there prior to starting my cutout. Because everybody's gathered right there. They're not congregating back in a space where I can't reach them. This part here is not quite so messy, but they're a little more agitated when you get into this. My smoker's getting low on pine straw, so it's starting to blow flames. So now I gotta go march around in the swamp here and <laughs> find enough dried junk to burn. There it is, those long stalks right there. I'll break a bunch of those up and put in there and all this goldenrod leftovers. They're roaring now. They're trying to pump out all that smoke I've been blowing in there. I've got six full frames of brood in the box. And I'm down to the last. Uh, should be that should be the last comb. There may be one behind it. I still hadn't spotted the queen yet. I'm taking the bees that are left in the frame and just scooping them up on a piece of foundation. Setting them down, let them go in the box while I look for the queen. Down to the wire here. I just set the box up top. You can see the workers that have been hanging out on the frame and starting to march that way. This is the best way to pick all your bees up rather than vacuuming, sweeping, or any other way. If you can, just set the box right back up there where the hive was after you get the brood in it and it won't take them long they'll go back to it especially being right here close to dark and 
Man, I was gonna go do some more work after this, but I don't know if you can tell how wet my pants are, but I didn't pee in them. I sweat. I'm calling it a day after this. I'm dehydrated. I'm still stacking honey up. Look at that bucket there. These two here, I'm telling you, that I couldn't get any more in them. just packed full. And that right there is packed full and then stacked some more. Let's see if my thermos runs, honey. It's probably clogged up with wax as tight as I packed that in there. Well, by the time I finished this cutout last night, I was wrung out, so I didn't get to finish videoing. But uh, I got the hive in there. I think there was uh, six or seven frames of brood. And I wound up probably leaving a thousand bees behind. They were running back and forth from the outside of the house to under the house. I was chasing them back and forth with my smoker and um, be quick. So for some reason they didn't want to go to the box as easily as they usually do. And uh, the uh, mosquito suit for cutouts, not such a good idea. It's alright for just regular inspections and stuff. But man, they still, after I got good and sweaty and that mosquito suit was sticking to me, they were eating me up just like I wasn't wearing anything. Here's the swarm from my thousand sub swarm capture video. They've been locked up for a day and a half now. I'm gonna turn them loose. Let them come on out and do their orientation flight. I usually lock them up for two solid days when I catch a swarm, but kind of hot out here they, they got plenty of food and they're in the shade and they've got a inside the, the high feeder on them right now so they probably would be fine but I'm just gonna let them loose anyway oh, I wondered where that went <laughs> 